Welcome to Search Talk Live with search engine optimization and marketing experts Robert O'Haver and Caleb McKelvin, powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Hey, good afternoon and welcome to the show today. I hope you all are uh, call in today and with your questions. And uh, today we're covering what is our keyword research and how it's done and some good techniques to help you get up in search. Caleb's with me today. How are you, Caleb? Doing good, Robert. How about you? Amazing. <laughs> Ready to talk some keyword research. I think so, yeah. Let's talk geek. Let's talk some geek. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see where we should start today. Let's uh, let's start. Let's, uh, let me see. Let's, let's start with this way. Okay. Whether you have an existing website or you have a new website, preferably a new website, but you can do this with a current website is the first thing you want to do is you want to go out there and find out who your competition is now you might have competition that uh, you think is your competition but really it's the people that are coming up in search that are organic that's your competition and those are the people you're you're uh, wanting to look at first and uh, to do that and, and one of the and it's almost like you would do when you were doing keyword research the first thing you'd want to do is pull up their website and use a, uh, uh, you know, a key, a tool like uh, screaming frog or, or um, some of the tools I like to use or spy foo. Um, spy is great for giving you keywords that are, uh, will give you paid keywords that they're using the most. And then it'll also give you what keywords they're ranking for your competition. And then going back to the links, well, one thing you want to do is, um, you know, find out the links, what their, their anchor texts are, if there's any, um, you know, look at some of the links and see if there's any, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, the, uh, the co-citation is what I was looking for. I couldn't think of the word, um, and, and see what they're looking to do as far as ranking goes. Now, um, what the next thing you want to do is uh, also is is see what kind of traffic those keywords are bringing in. Like, um, use a keyword tool such as uh, uh, the Keyword Planner in AdWords. And if you don't have an AdWords account, you can go sign up for one for free, but that'll give you access to the Keyword Planner tool. And the Keyword Planner tool does two things. They just brought back the exact match, which I wouldn't look at that. I mean, that would be, yeah, part of your research. But look at the phrases that you cut in your research that you've done to find um, those keywords that your competition's going after, and in, and what brings in the most traffic. Not always. Now, if your competition is something or so a company like a big brand like Walmart or or Kmart or something like that, what you want to do is be creative in that point. You want to take those, uh, look at the different keyword variations and see the ones they rank for, and maybe look at around those keywords that. Uh, say your brand is, uh, you're selling, you know, widgets, let's just say widgets. <laughs> um, you want to take those widgets and if they rank for number one on widgets and all these brand, big brands, then maybe you, you want to rank for something widgets in a box or something like that. It's just a bad example. But if you understand what I'm saying is maybe they don't rank for that variation and you can go after that targeted keyword more in, in a way that you don't have to try and compete with these big dogs these big box stores. So in, in the same way it goes for uh, when you're doing AdWords. Um, if you're a company that's been using AdWords, that's fantastic. You take your analytical data from AdWords, look at the keywords that are giving you conversions. Those conversions are amazing. I mean, like if you're getting a 5 or 5% conversion rate or more, then those conversions are going to, I mean, those keywords are going to um, give you what you're looking for as far as uh, when you want to rank. I mean, those are great signals to, to find keywords. Caleb, you want to add to that? Well, I think the number one thing that we need to focus on when it comes to keyword research is the actual research. That's, that's the main point of this whole thing is finding the right keywords, finding uh, your target audience, what their intent is, what they're searching for. And like you already touched on your competitors, it takes a lot of research to find the right keywords, how to say the same thing in 
different words, finding something that, that you can actually focus on that's going to give you the best results. And it takes a lot of research whenever you're, whether you're developing a new site or uh, rebranding yourself or uh, redoing your, your current site and you want to focus on new keywords, it's going to take a lot of research using the right tools, understanding uh, user intent, what your desired audience is searching for, uh, what you actually want to rank for, and if you're capable of ranking for that keyword, um, and the particular phrases and words that are going to give you the best results. Exactly. And, and the, the thing is, too, is you don't want to use an exact match phrase. So if, it, if it's for widgets in a box, that's kind of an exact match phrase. So what you would want to do is you want to look up, I mean, there's a, there's a and it, next week we're going to go into this pretty deeply, but we're going to go into the different uh, algorithms. I think it's important that everyone understand how all these different algorithms work, and that'll help you as a site owner or webmaster on how to uh, prepare your site or, or, you know, to keep from getting uh, a penalty on your site and to obviously bring you more traffic. But uh, what I was getting to with this keyword thing is there's there's an algorithm called Hummingbird, which I'll get into details on that later. I don't want to go too deep into it. But Hummingbird is a more natural speaking because if you you know that about 60 percent of traffic comes from a mobile phone so you know most people i mean like a, i have a google now so if i search for something it's in a more natural speaking tone so it's going to instead of saying just widgets in a box i'm going to say where can i find widgets in a box or uh where's my closest place to buy widgets in a box you know Again, that's a bad, <laughs> bad right. analogy, but but I think what you're getting at is you have to understand user intent <laughs> in this whole thing. You got to it's, it's more naturally speaking. The whole keyword specific thing is kind of out the door. It is really. Google really understands what people are searching for and how they're searching for it, and but they're also trying to get away from um, uh, websites focusing specifically on you know pounding this keyword out over and over and over again. It understands your content. It understands that. If you're providing this certain service or this certain product and you're providing a, a, a quality product on your website, uh, it knows that this you're going to be the best match for what these people are searching for. Yeah, and only you know what your website's about. But when you use something like the Keyword Planner, there's other tools, and I don't want to go into Keyword Planner all the time because that's not the, my favorite. But, right. I mean, I use it as a backup just to, to, to back up the data that I already look at. Again, I use... Uh, SCM Rush or Moz, um, both of those have great, amazing keyword tools. Uh, they have all kinds of tools, but um, you know, if you want to go in the less expensive way, then uh, you know, um, SCM Moz or SCM Rush uh, would probably be a good one. But um, what you want to do with those keywords is you want to make sure not only don't use just you know synonyms of that word or whatever. But there's a, and I'm going to use another bad analogy here, but there's there's another way to, when you write those keywords with the into your content, to use, you know, if we're talking about uh, widgets in a box, I guess we'll go back to that. Um, you want to, you know, there's another, you know, things you can use like boxed or, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a variation of that. But yeah. But what I'm talking about in that in the widget thing is a bad example. But if it's if you're talking about ships, and if you talk about tugboats, Google knows that ships and tugboats they're the same thing. Related. They're related keywords. Right. It's not a synonym, but it's you're talking around that same subject, and Google recognizes that. Right. You're finding you're finding a different way to say the same thing, which is very productive and, and can be effective. Because, I mean, it, like we said, it's not exact keyword specific. Let's take a step back, Robert, and, and maybe for those who are, um, you know, kind of getting started on keyword research. Because if you really just look at it and say, what keywords do I need to, to focus on, your head might explode. If you really need to step back and get the whole process started, where would somebody need to start? What would, before they even use the tool or before they even look, what would their mindset, their uh, uh analysis what should they actually do are we talking about an existing site or a new site uh, let's let's go with a new site if somebody is is working on a new site kind of what, what before they even start any type of tool what do they really need to do i, I think they really need to get in a, a a good grasp on who their competition is um if you're 
you know, if you're a local business, then you obviously know who your local competition is. But if you're a national business, it's a little bit different. You're going to, um, and also even in a local situation, you're going to find sites that, you know, this guy offline is my competition, but online it may be somebody totally different. So you got to look at it that way as well. And then you take those keywords and I, I, uh, or not keywords, those, those websites and to see what they're doing. Look at their website um, as far as their writing styles. If they're ranking on the first page of Google, look at the writing styles. Look at how they did their their titles and their page titles and, and their, meta, their H1 tags. Look at how that stuff's done. I mean, that's going to, if you compare those three sites, that's the simplest way to get an idea of what Google likes. Because, I mean, A, it's not going to be, that's the only reason they're ranking is because the way their site is, but there's links and all that other stuff involved. But um, I would say start there and that would be a, that would give you a good uh, place to start. Right. Right. Um, uh, I mean, you know, you also need to analyze your own services and your own products. What right. are you offering? I mean, you know, what specific services are you offering and who your target audience is and finding out, considering what you're offering to who you're trying to reach, what those people are actually searching for. That'll give you a good guide of, okay, here are what uh, I need to rank for. Here's what I need to focus on. Here's what other people are focused on. And that'll give you your competitor list and be like, okay, here's what they're doing. Here's how they're ranking so high. And, you know, here's how I can do something to combat that and, and include that into my content, my website to, to help uh, be found for those specific keywords. Right. And then again, you, like I said earlier, we, you, you go back and you take those URLs and use a really good tool. Um, I mean, if you're, you can do it manually, but it will take hours and hours to pull all that data together to get that information you're looking for. You use something that, you know, like uh, SEMrush or SpyFu. SpyFu is really great because it gives you not only the organic keywords, but it gives you what they're bidding on in AdWords. So, um, you can see what is the most successful keywords for them, and you can also see where they're ranking organically. And that's kind of a great place to go because it's all right there in one one view, really. Right. And you can even see look at their ads they're they're running that stuff like that. Um, and then you can use Moz, of course, and do that to do it the same way. But what you're going to look for is those links and what they're using for anchor text. Uh, Nine times out of ten, you know, whatever their anchor text is, it's what they're trying to rank for. And then you can also uh, do your local searches yourself through Google and uh, look at it that way. But uh, those those analytical tools will definitely give you the insight you need to say, okay, this is what I need to design my page around. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be – and last week I know we talked about uh, – on page optimization. So, you know, you don't want to go and stuff three or four different keyword phrases that you found into one page. You want to try and try and stick with one or two for each page and then create your content and, and everything around that. Uh, well, I think your content needs to basically kind of be the muscle of what you're trying to do. I mean, yeah. I know you're focusing on this specific keyword and, and, and you know, this general idea, but your content's really going to beef it up. And, yeah. and, and, you know, I think search engines are going to see, okay, well, their content is very high quality. It's very detailed, and it's it's beefing up this type of keyword that they're going after, and it's only going to help you in the long run. Yeah. Um, as far as, um, and I'd like to get your take on this specifically, Robert. I don't know if we've talked about this yet. For uh, keyword research, what do you think? Um, some people have mentioned social media as being an effective tool. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, you can look at like trends and stuff like that. I don't really stick, uh, I don't really stick to social media as far as that goes. Well, it's um, kind of up and down. And then, I mean, one thing's trending and then all of a sudden the next thing, I mean, right. Kinda, yeah. It, it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. It changes daily. I mean, you really got to look at the data, the historical data, your Google analytics, um, what Google does let you see in there, um, can give you great signals on what you need to bid on. But obviously if you're a new site, that's a little harder to guess at. But um, if you have a website that you're trying to increase 
uh, brand name and all that good stuff, then you have the data. It's there. You just got to know where it's at, where to find it, and then and know how to manipulate that data to find out, you know, where you're missing. You know, and it, it, like, again, go back to the competition. And you, those that are successful, don't, I mean, don't sit there and try to compete with the big box store. That's a big thing right now. People are talking about, you know, Google's really giving the big box stores the brands you know, the, 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 the ranking and that's, you know, somewhat the case, but if you're, if you're someone looking for Walmart, you don't want that person going to your site anyway, even if you're the same type of store, because they're specifically looking for that brand. Right. Of course, they're going to rank for that. But if they're looking for a product or a service that you offer, that's what you want to go after. Cause Google, I mean, uh, cause you know, the big box stores don't try to rank for all that stuff. They're, just too big. I mean, they've got hundreds and millions of different products and services. So go after that. That's, that's your target. That's where you sneak right in and, and take that big box store out as far as ranking. Um, you got to be creative with that. Right. Well, I, well, I think, you know, not going outside of your means, like you said, competing against Walmart or, or ranking for certain things, you have to understand what you provide as far as a product or a service and be specific to that. Because if you get, unwanted traffic i mean it's pointless and you're honestly you're missing out on the actual audience you should be going after i mean you need to get specific with it and you need to have uh, actual traffic and visits to your website that are going to produce results right. targeted traffic targeted that's what traffic. it's all about, what it's all about. absolutely but the, you know the thing is too is you uh, when you're looking for that keyword you don't want to be focused on one set of keywords. You want to you want to go through, look at the, all the things you offer, and be dynamic. I mean, things switch up because you might find that a keyword that you were working, you know, a year ago, might have changed up a little bit, or maybe it's just not a, a branded way. You might, you know, just got to be creative with it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, what would be some ways other than using some tools to get to actually get some not say outside of the box, but some fresh ideas because, I mean, there will be a lot of people going for, a, I mean, if you're a, uh, you know, a real estate agent or a doctor or a dentist or if you provide a very common service, what, what's a different way you might get some some fresh ideas to, to, to focus on, some fresh keyword ideas to focus on? Well, again, those are examples you just gave me are local businesses. Yep. So, obviously, you, you'd want to use your local citations in your in your titles and stuff like that as far as when you when you're doing keywords say if you're a orthopedic surgeon or or a spine surgeon or, or something like that then you uh you know you want to use those local citations and, and in that content use those keywords and 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 talk around what you do as far as the service and product on those on those pages don't worry i mean you're going to get a lot of like i said in the last episode is you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck when it comes to the titles and metadata than you're going to get with the content being spammed full of, of these exact match keywords and stuff. In fact, that, that, that does negative for you. So you want to have it to where it, it makes sense and it's focused on what the product or service is. But don't sit there and say, you know, bo- uh, widgets in a box and then something else, widgets in a box, <laughs> you right. know, that type yeah. of stuff. So, Which is in a box. Yeah. So focus on that if you're a local business. If you're if you're a national business, then it's a little different. Then you wanna, it's it's going to be harder, um, and it depends on what your offer is, and that type of thing. Right. Right. Uh, I think one cool thing that a lot of people don't uh, use very often is semantic search, yeah. um, and you know I think that's you can definitely find user intent, especially you type in you know. Uh, a few words into the, you know, Google search bar or search engine search bar and uh, whatever it may be. And then it finishes it for you. So if you ever typed a few words in and then you see it, Google gives you suggestions, you know, that's a type of semantic search. So you can get actually get uh, how people are finishing that specific search. And that's going to give you a good general idea of, hey, these are obviously common. There's a big audience searching for this. Is this something, is this the need I can meet? Yeah, and, and that brings up a great topic, and I totally, I didn't, it, you just it sparked a match anyway. But <laughs> what I was going to say is 
with that is there is also, and, and you know this if you're in paid search or, or organic, there's an intent there. So, yep. you know, you've got to pick keywords that have that intent of purchase if you're selling a product. You know, if someone's searching for reviews on uh, a Dell laptop, those people are not exactly ready to buy yet. So, but if you say best prices for, you know, a Dell laptop, then that's a more buying signal type of thing. Right. So you would want to go after that. And that's a lot of the big box stores don't really do that. Right. So there's another place you can kind of attack that from. Um, so it, it, you have to educate yourself on as far as, you know, what the intent when someone is searching, especially when it's mobile or that type of stuff. So in those keyword tools that we've mentioned, um, and we can put a link to it in the description if you like, after the show. Um, but those, those type of things will give you the, you know, a clear signal as to where you want to go with your keyword research. All right. Definitely. I think that user intent is going to be big and what your specific focus is going to be. And when the, the products and the services that you provide, understanding that intent, doing your research on, um, you know, uh, kind of creating, uh, the right traffic, the targeted traffic to your website is, is going to be huge once you understand that intent. So, definitely. Right. Well, I, does that cover it? It might. You got anything else you want to add? No, I think we covered a lot. This is more your forte, the whole keyword <laughs> research. He's kind of the guru on this uh, and and stuff like that. All right, well, so. let's bring up another topic. What, uh, what do you think we should talk about next? Um, well, Guys, the limit. How about a caller? You know, if you want to call into the show. Yeah, please feel free to call in. Yeah. We love questions, whether we can answer them or not. We love them. <laughs> the, the phone number to call, if you'd like to call in, is 855-722-0006. That's 855-722-0006. Uh, we are taking calls right now. So if you have any, uh, please call. Or you can use the chat on the uh, Mixer. Mixler. Uh, chat box. Um, let's see. What do you want to talk about, Kelly? We want to dive into WordPress? Yeah, that sounds great. Let's dive into WordPress. Enough of it. <laughs> yeah, deal with it every day. All right, well, let's, let's dive into it. Um, now, we covered key, we cavered, we cavered, we covered the most uh, on-page optimization, which the same thing applies to WordPress. Um, now, one thing, the things I do want to cover is you know, maybe content sites or, uh, you know, just things that you want to watch out for when you're using a WordPress site. Because there's some, some things that are features that are offered on WordPress may not be the best for you or, or anybody. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's see. Let's start with images. You uh, One of the things that uh, you want to do is rank. Uh, it's a ranking signal is the load time of your site. And we've kind of touched on this in the last episode, but one thing you want to do when you, when you're like, if you're pulling images from a stock site or something like that, I've seen quite a few times where the uh, person doesn't change the title or the, or the, you know, the, the, the file name. And what happens is Google or not Google, what uh, WordPress does when you upload that thing, it takes that file name and it makes it a, a, uh, alt text so if it's shutterstock your alt text is going to be shutterstock and then your before you know it by the time you're done your site is loaded with you know optimized for shutterstock yeah all <laughs> over the place yeah so you want to make sure that when you upload images that you change the title to maybe something that is specific on that page it's yes. going on title alt text and it's right. so easy to, right. and that's one good thing about WordPress is going in and optimizing all of these things. Oh, it's, it's simple. Extreme. And, yeah. you know, even if you don't have SEO experience or uh, any digital experience whatsoever and you have a site, it's easy to manage and, and change things like that. But, yeah, the uh, making sure that you change the, the title, the alt text, and making sure that image is optimized um, for your website to, to make sure that your load speed, it does not impact your load speed in a negative way is huge. Yeah, and you can... You can take that uh, alt text. You don't have to go with what the title is. You can go in and, and actually change that manually too, going into the the, the uh, properties of that image and changing the uh, alt text. 
Yeah. And then the other, the other thing, huge, when I was going back on load times, is a lot of people upload giant images and they take forever to load. <laughs> um, if you have a Photoshop or something like that, it's great to just optimize that image to where it's, you know, around 500 K or even, I mean, get, obviously you want to get it as small as you can. I don't want to say, okay, you're at 500. It's good. But you want to make sure that it loads fast. Um, if your site's loaded down with a bunch of giant images, obviously that's not good. Um, and then you want, you can also do this in Photoshop, I mean, in Photoshop, in AdWords, you are uh, AdWords in WordPress. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm getting tired. All over the place. Yeah. In WordPress, you can actually change the image size and it'll shrink it down, not with HTML, but it'll, it'll actually compress it, compress it down to a smaller size. Make sure it loads quickly. Exactly. And, and, um, so that, that would be one important thing. And, and I have to harp on this because, uh, I see it all too often, but the next thing I want to touch on is probably, um, tags, tags and categories. Yeah. Uh, tags in the posts, um, don't use them because what happens is a tag. Every time you put in a tag with a keyword or whatever you want to use used to, it was great. It was fantastic before Panda came along. Um, what happens when you add those tags, every time you put a tag in, it creates another page with the same content on it. So guess what that is? Duplicate content. Yes, absolutely. Which is a no, no, huge no, no. And it, it, it's not going to throw up a red flag right away, but if you're, especially if you're a content site and you're adding tags every single time you put up a, uh, a post then guess what? You're going to have a site full of more posts than uh, more tags than you do posts. Right. And then that's when Panda jumps in and says, Hey, uh, what is this low quality? Right. Let's throw it away. Well, I don't think you need to, <laughs> it's important not to make sure to make sure you don't confuse tags and categories. You need to assign a category to, um, your post. If you're putting it up, uh, that's always a good thing. Put in that specific category. If you got a page for it, but the tags, especially if you had multiple tags to it, just, it's the best to refrain from using those tags because like Rob said, uh, you're going to run into those duplicate content issues, which, you know, if you're just creating a site or if you've just been doing it, you're not going to see negative results at the moment, but later on down the road, you're going to have all these duplicate pages, content pages, and you might get slammed. Yeah, definitely. And, and that, that's definitely what we want to keep from happening to anybody. Right. Uh, because once you're in it, you're it takes forever to get out of it. But, um, going back to that, uh, the tags, if you have already used them and you want to get rid of them, the best thing to do is remove the tags, delete them, and then go in and make sure you click on each tag or do a sitemap. Check your sitemap first before you do the, uh, find all the pages that have the, the slash tag slash in it and redirect those Do a 301 redirect to the home page. And then go through and get rid of all those tags. And there's all, you can do it that way, or you can take, uh, you can do canonical tags on those duplicate pages. And then that canonical tag should be linking to be the link for the original post. Right. That's too much work for me. <laughs> That's a lot of work. I use, I use a plugin that I, and I don't, I'm, give me a second, Caleb. Can you go ahead and talk here for a second? I'm going to pull that up. Yeah, I can talk, Rob. I can do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you don't want to add all those tags, and if you've already done it, it's going to be a little work to take those out. But um, if you're just starting the site or, or putting up content, just refrain from using the tags before you get in a mess. Uh, keep the categories. And this is this is for a lot of navigation purposes as well. Um, that way your site is, uh, when it's indexed and crawled, it gives it direction. Those category pages are going to give it direction to, uh, you know, where it's going and the type of content that it's about to encounter. And so it keeps your site, like we talked about last week, as far as on-page optimization goes, it keeps it nice, organized, and structured, and easy to use for the user. Okay, I found it. All right, the name of that that uh, plugin is called Duplicate yeah, Duplicate Content Cure. Um, what it does is it it blocks the search engines from seeing 
any uh, category pages or, I mean, they'll, let me back up. I'm sorry. It, it will put them in a no index and a follow. So it'll, it won't index the page. And this is how you should do your category pages and tags. You can do it that way. You can say, do not sh- let Google see this page, but don't index it. So what it's going to do when Google crawls the category page or these tag pages, it's going to still hit all those links that are linking off of that page, which you want it to do, which is if it's an article page or a product page or that type of thing. Those always, always take that category, make it a no index, but keep the follow. Let it follow the page and go through the rest of the site. That's the one good thing about WordPress is the plugins. Yes. If you can find the right plugins, then uh, you're definitely going to help your site uh, SEO-wise. Uh, you know, you need to make sure you find the right ones, read reviews, find the uh, the right things, and it's going to help your site big time, especially one like this where it will help you avoid the dreaded duplicate content. Yeah, uh, and, and a category page will give off the same signal to Google. It's going to see those category pages where you have the – uh, excerpt in the picture or whatever that each of those posts that you put up, and then it's going to see the pages that they link to, which are basically half of the page is the same thing. So you're going to get that duplicate content. So if you know index and follow those pages, it'll tell Google don't index it, but you know follow these links. Here it is. Yeah, and and basically it makes Google all it wants to see is your post. It's going to focus on just the post, not your tags or anything, but the way I do it, and you don't have to do it this way, but I delete the tags and redirect them to the home page, and that way it tells Google, "Hey, this page is gone, and we're, it's never coming back." Yeah. Um, and then also the other thing I I use is uh, SEM or Yoast uh, for SEO. Yoast is kind of an all-in-one, isn't it? It is, and and one thing that good is well, there's several good things about Yoast, but the, uh, let me get back to it here. In Yoast, you have, uh, you can do your, you can connect your webmaster tools. Uh, you can, uh, your title tags and all that stuff is, is in Yoast. So in a post, you put your, at the bottom of the post in the editing screen, you have your title tags and meta descriptions. Now, the only thing I don't agree with on Yoast is the way they, score your your pages they use an old school technique is exact match anchor text so what it's going to do is it's going to go look at your whole page and if and count how many times you have that exact match and that they, they just don't do that anymore you know but uh yeah it's it's really important if you are using yoast and you're trying to get it in the green every time you know it's that's not always the most important thing yeah i mean you need you you need to focus on um, you know, using your best efforts in, in the right way instead of focusing on getting in the green because, like Robert said, it's it's an old-school tactic that they used, and it's not always the best practices that is going to rank in the green. So, uh, you know, that's not necessarily the best thing to look for. But overall, SEO-wise, it's gonna, it'll help your site big time in helping you keep everything um, on point when it comes to SEO. Yeah, and, and for a beginner, it just makes things so easy. Like, I mean, it explains mostly everything. Yeah, it walks you through everything. And there's, um, you can also, and that's another thing I didn't add, like for your category pages and your posts, or your category pages, tag pages, that stuff, inside Yoast, you can block those. There's a, I think under titles and metadata, there's a taxonomy, taxonomy can't even talk there's a place you can block those well it'll no index and follow like i was just describing before and then also your archive stuff you want to make sure that those category pages that you know if if you have an author that is uh written a lot of articles and it goes you know three pages deep you want to make those no indexed as well so you'd want to it'd be no index and follow so you want to still follow all those articles so they still rank and get all that SEO juice that you've put into those articles. Uh, but you want to keep them off from indexing those category pages, regardless of how deep they go. And that the, when it goes to a second page, that's considered an archive. So you'll, you'll do the same thing with that on the tags. 
and then that will make your site. Um, I've ran, I just finished a site recently. I ran it through Moz and uh, I only had like, I think it was like six or nine problems and it's, and it was a total content site. So uh, it definitely works and yeah. it, and it's, uh, it'll keep your site from getting any kind of penalties on it or anything. And that's one thing I can touch on too about this show. Anything I do out in public Anything that I give advice or offering on, and same with Caleb, you're never going to get anything from us that's going to hurt your site. Yeah. Whether you're a, a, a small business, large business, a personal site, whatever, you this can be the place where you can get, you know, if we don't know it, we're, we'll straight up tell you we don't yeah, know. Yeah, we'll find somebody that does. Yeah, exactly, and we'll, we'll get back to you for sure. Yeah. Um, but we all are, we spend a lot of our time helping others. Um, uh all across the web. Yeah. So, um, anything else, Caleb, you think we can, let's see, we could touch on, um, yeah, make sure. And we've talked about this in the last show is keep your titles down under 58, 60 characters right. and your descriptions, um, kind of use the same technique that we told you about when it comes to, uh, variations and talking around a product or service. Right. Well, I know we talked about a lot of, I mean, our show was about on-page optimization last week. Yeah. And if you're using a WordPress site or if you're wanting to start a site and not sure how to really structure your on-page optimization, I would definitely suggest using WordPress because it's going to be your best bet and it's going to be simplified for you and, and you know, you can be very productive with, with that site. Yeah, for the most part, you don't have to know how to code. There might be a few things that you might need to do, but a few um, things you can do research on and do yourself though. Not right, not right. too difficult. You don't have to be a coding guru. Yeah, there's definitely a learning curve with it. The um, uh, that you have to get through. Yeah. But I mean, as far as SEO, the SEO plugin uh, Yoast, I mean, it, it gives you your social media stuff, connects all that together, um, and it puts in your uh, OAuth information which is basically the the code that when you share your content with uh google or facebook it, it'll you can do uh twitter cards which makes your post look uh a lot nicer than everybody else's post yeah puts an image in it and a little you know the link and your description and then with facebook it gives you the author uh the website a picture of what whatever is posted on that post uh the picture that's posted on that post and then uh, that's all that code does that. So that's that's included in Yoast. So, um, and then you got your site map, which is really important. Yes. Um, every website should have a site map because that's Google's roadmap to your site. Yeah. So once you build your site, obviously you want to start Webmaster Tools, and I think that could be another topic. Uh, going through Webmaster Tools and talking about the different tools and and stuff available to to webmasters. But um. You can, you want your sitemap because you have to submit that to the search engines. And then what that does is basically, it's a map. I mean, basically, here's, you know, here's how you get from New York to Seattle. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and they need that, honestly, because, yeah. I mean, you can either trust them that they're just going to find what they need to find, or you can provide that actual map to the treasure for them. And, you know, it's going to make things a whole lot easier on you. It's going to make it on, on easier on them. And, uh, you know, having that healthy relationship is going to be uh, huge for you. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, is when you create that sitemap, you want to make sure that you go through the taxonomy section of that. And there's a place that says, you know, check out, check out, uh, check off what you don't want the site in the sitemap. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's going to be cat categories if you're a, a, a product uh, content. content site. Thank you. It's categories, tags, uh, portfolios, and, and uh, there's two different types of tags. There's a post tag and a portfolio tag, and some depends on what template you're using, but you want to have categories and tags checked every time. Yeah. Uh, and that will take the, the uh, category out, the category pages out of the sitemap. And then what you want to do is you can get to your sitemap by putting in your domain name forward slash. Uh, so let me see what it is here. <laughs> uh, 
it's probably going to be different for everybody, but it's 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 either sitemap.xml or sitemap underscore index dot html if you're using Yoast. Uh, and then you can see there, it'll show you the links that they have to the sitemaps. It'll have posts, and then it'll have uh, pages. It should be all you have in there. Um, and if you have see. more, you need to make sure you do something about it. Yeah, you, just, you have to tweak it. Sometimes Yoast is a little yeah. finicky. But this goes back to the whole thing on SEO is a daily process. you got to check things yep. on a daily basis and make sure that everything is optimized correctly and uh, everything looks good. So, you know, this is not an uh, infomercial set it and forget it kind of thing. Yep. This is a set it and maintain it daily kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, and, and the other thing, too, I'd like to say when you're using um, – WordPress, there's a million different plugins. There is a plugin, almost like mobile phones. There's a plugin for that. You just, Everything. You just name it. Um, some of them don't work well, but, uh, you know, it's a, and some of them don't work well with each other. Like you might get something that totally blocks your site or, you know, messes up your site. You have to go through and, and you just got to make sure everything works together right. Um, the other thing I was going to say is themes. If you use a theme that's already made, which – is there's nothing wrong with that, but you wanted, I wouldn't go with a free theme. There's usually what happens if you look at the code in some of those sites, they have a million different links to their other sites, yeah. <laughs> yeah. which can get you in trouble. Yeah. But, uh, you know, or they're, you know, almost Yoast and, uh, I mean, Yoast does it in their, their site map, but it's okay. As long as you block that in your robots text file. And those free themes are kind of bland and ugly yeah yeah no offense but yeah shilling that a little extra cash is going to be definitely worth your time and money if you're going to build a site you want to build it right you want to do things right yeah or or if you're handy if you know html or you know php by all means take a a good uh, working platform like uh um genesis or um what's the twitter one um uh, sorry, my mind. <laughs> I can't think of them all. But anyway, there's there's several different platforms. Genesis is really nice because it's it's mobile friendly, and the the theme options for it are, I mean, for dummies. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to think of the other one, uh, other platform. Where, uh, but I can't. But anyway, <laughs> um, um, we got anything else to add? Um, let's see. I mean, what else we got here. going on? Um, let's see. Also, Yoast has uh, some other tools that you can use yeah. depending on what kind of site you have. You can use uh, if you're a news site, you can use the. They have a news extension that you can use. And if I can find it here. Oh, and the other thing too, you want to. Um, if you are savvy on PHP and you do buy a theme that's already out there, the one thing you can't do if you do edit the content or the, not the content, the, uh, the code, the PHP code, you can't update that theme anymore because it's going to, it's going to break your site. But the, uh, if you use a custom theme or not a custom theme, if you have somebody custom make you a WordPress theme, and I highly recommend this because most of the themes out there, some of them are really nice. I mean, I, I use one a theme myself. Um, but it, you want to make sure that you take the code. The, the, you know, you're going to see multiple links to JavaScript. You're going to see multiple links to CSS. You want to minify all that. Put it all together into one file, not the CSS and the JavaScript, but you know what I'm saying. Put all this, the, the CSS into one file. Put all the JavaScript into one file. So it's only calling the server one time instead of multiple times. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and when you, also if you're if you're using videos on your site, upload them to Word uh, to YouTube because let let YouTube do the heavy lifting. These yep. guys are they're taking up to 4K now, and they're streaming it like I mean like, like that. It's Snap crazy. Of finger. Yeah, much easier to upload it to YouTube and then embedded on your exactly device. now the one thing you can do is um and we'll probably go into this in another show but you can use rich snippets uh to give video descriptions because google can't really 
uh, crawl a video. Yeah, they don't know what the video is about. So if you if you give them that that meta information or schema dot org yeah. whatever you want to call it, um, it's very helpful in helping you rank too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I think that pretty much covers the most important things on on WordPress. How are we on time? Okay, so we got uh, about five minutes. Yeah, actually, we've got about fifteen minutes left. If you want to go for the full hour, guys, let's do it, man. <laughs> Caleb, let's bring up some more topics or some phone calls. Like I said, you can call us. Call um, us. We won't bite. We promise. Yeah, you can send us a message on the texting thing, or you can call us at eight five five seven two two zero 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 six. Um, our show is from uh, on every Tuesday. From three thirty to four thirty. Um, let's see. We do have some listeners, I see. <laughs> hmm. But uh, what do you want to bring up now? Oh boy, what can we bring up? God, there's so much. But there's. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of something that's won't take up. It'll take up fifteen minutes, but I uh, uh, can't think of anything. <laughs> well, Every, everything's almost an hour show right like. exactly uh let's let's dig into some more wordpress um i guess um also you want to you want to make sure that you use and this is more technical but when you're doing javascript on your site try to use google's javascript library um everything else will load faster unless you're trying to to do it on if you're trying to do it on your site it's going to take longer um and then, oh yeah, I know what we could talk about. Let's go back to plugins because this is a plugin that everybody must have, in my opinion. It is called WP Smush. W- Smush it. Yeah. It originally, it was developed by Yahoo. And what it does is it com- it compresses your images into a gzip file. So what it what it is is server side. So. It'll take your images and compress them. So when somebody requests them, it pops it right out, uh, and it compresses the size uh, sometimes fifty percent. Yep. Uh, but it'll well, definitely make your site load faster. Even it, especially if you're doing good practices and optimizing your images already, this is just icing on the cake. Yep. And anytime you add an image, you don't even have to do anything to it. It's gonna it's gonna smush it for you. Yep. And then there's another one. I won't mention that one because it's uh, there's some there's some compression stuff that you can get, um, but if you're on like a uh, GoDaddy or something, they won't let you use it for some reason. It's been blacklisted. I don't know why, but um, and then there's also uh, redirection, which is the 301 redirect tool. Uh, you can use that. It's it makes simple. Again, you don't have to put any code in your site. You just go in there and say, I want this old URL to go to the new one, uh, wherever you want it to go to. Uh, and that's the same thing. And then uh, the other thing I do want to touch on in, in uh, SEO or Yoast is canonical tags. Yoast automatically adds canonical tags to your site. But if it's a tag like we were talking about earlier, you want to make sure that that canonical tag points to the original post, not to... You don't want to make sure that you want to make sure it doesn't have that tag URL in that canonical. Yeah. So you want to point it to the original. So if Google hits those two tags or however many tags you created, it'll then say, Google, hey, the, the original is over here. Don't index this. That's what a canonical is all about. Um, let's see. There's the other stuff that you can use for your site, like uh, Speed Boost. I've used that a couple times. I'm not too convinced with it yet. Still checking it out, but uh, um, but definitely you want to get WP Smush. Not that I'm trying to advertise it; it's a free tool. <laughs> no, it works. <laughs> and you know, it's when you are using WordPress, it's very important that you integrate your social media into your WordPress and give people the option of sharing your content. I've been on some websites where they uh, don't even give the users the option to uh, tweet it, post it on Facebook, share it with their friends. You know, it's very easy to integrate your social media in your WordPress yeah. and, and make it big, make it bold. 
that, hey, you like this content or you like our website, share it with your friends, yep. you know, get it out there, tweet about it, Google+, Plus, Instagram, I mean, all these other social media sites that I have no idea what they are. <laughs> so You just got to be real careful when you're putting in plugins. So, yeah, there's a plugin for everything, but you don't – some of those plugins, actually a lot of plugins – will slow your site down yeah so you want to make sure that you're only you only have in there active stuff that you're using so you know if it you know you try something out if it's not working out delete it because you know it'll cause conflicts with other plugins or or other stuff like that just gonna weigh you down yeah exactly so keep it as trimmed as possible don't try to find a plugin for every single thing if you know how to do HTML or CSS and and stuff you can do yourself, right. or maybe if you know PHP. Right. Um, Putting in a plug-in where you can do, you know what you're doing and it takes minimal work, you don't necessarily need to add it. It's, it's mainly those plugins where, A, you're not necessarily sure how to do it and it's going to help you and walk you through it, or it's going to uh, boost your site's performance. Those are really the main ones you want to focus on. But, you know, some of the simple ones, where if you know how to do it, just refrain from using it because, one, it's going to weigh you down, and, two, it can kind of contradict some of the other things that you're trying to do. Right, right, exactly. And and then the other things, too, that you can add in there, uh, if you want a form on your website, if your theme your theme might come with it, with it already, but in most cases it don't, you can, there's a plug-in for that. There's, uh, let's see, what am I using right now? Contact Form 7 is the plug-in I use, but there's Contact Manager, which is really good very easy to use you just i mean no coding involved at all in fact it can give you a short code you just throw in this little you know you open up the editor and throw it in there and bam there's your form done you just uh use it to you know just straighten it out or whatever you need to do in CSS. but i think that covers everything caleb um you got anything else no i think that was a, uh, a a good show i think we covered a lot um what are we going to talk about next week? Uh, we're going to talk about algorithms. algorithms yeah. We're going to talk about those nasty algorithms that are out to get you. Yes. We're going to talk about panda, penguin, uh, pigeon. Hummingbird. Hummingbird, exactly. And all these other animals that we've never heard of uh, they got going on. The mobile algorithm, which uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh, let's see what else. Um, there's phantom. <laughs> Sorry. There's a couple others I can't think of right now, but uh, we'll be discussing them next week. So be sure and tune in and call in. Don't forget that the number to call in is 855-722-006. And that concludes this episode of Digital Duo. A good one. Search Talk Live is a presentation of the Robert Palmer family of companies.